Right, I've blued that up so it's uh, less likely to uh, bugger the camera up with a focus. So I've got set up now to cut these uh, metric threads, 1.5mm pitch, change the gears on the lathe, uh, I'm set up on the gearbox. So we've got to just cut a thread relief in there of about 45 thou deep. Uh, just to set the dial. Uh, yeah, that's what we've got to do. Cut that and then thread it. So we'll see how it goes. Put the thread relief in first. Done. I've, uh, I've been into the VFD and I've uh, what have I done? I've, I've altered the settings in the VFD so it starts and stops in a second uh, because this is a manual lathe. Sorry, bloody manual lathe. I don't because it's an imperial lathe, I have to. Uh, once I start the thread, to cut the thread, I can't stop. Shit, oh shit. Oh. I think it's going to be one of them mornings. Well luckily it's sort of an anti-spill tin, so what, the only thing that come out was what was in the spout. Uh, no. Yeah, where was I? Yeah, it's an imperial lathe, so once I start cutting a metric thread, once I engage the half nuts, uh, they've got to stay in until we've got the job finished. Now, I know I've maybe said that before on my other videos, but maybe somebody will be watching this who hasn't seen them and not realised so. So we square that up like that. Uh, Zero the dial on the top slide. We'll zero out on the part. Move the carriage stop. Better just click the. Uh... Well, let's put the drive in for that. Just want to double check something. 1.5 A5 A5 well, should be good to rock and roll. I'll just find the 1.5 pitch on the threading gauge. Oh come on, what are you doing? Two 1.5 This is a it fits nicely. So we're going to replicate that, haven't we? Right. So let's just see if we're, uh, if we're all going in the right direction first. So that would be engaged. And that would be me coming back. Tell you what, I'll make sure I can 
got to get in all the way. Looking at that, I might struggle. Just to, to see if I've, I've got a slightly smaller centre than that one. Just let me get that and we'll change the centre. Right, well the slightly smaller centre I've got actually drops in the hole. Should have thought about that, shouldn't I, when I bored it out. So if I ever do one of these again, let's put a small drill through the middle, all the way through, but not follow it all the way to the end with the other one, so it would give me somewhere to hold on to. Right, let's just do a Five thousand scratch pass on, and then we'll see what happens. see anything let's bring you a little bit closer a bit closer right 1.5 put your magic glasses on to see it on the money Yet. Right, we'll carry on then. I think it needs to be around 40 mil, uh, 40 mil, 40 thou deep. So we're going another 5 thou. and repeat as Tommy Lipton says. I do like that guy. Love to meet him one day. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Hmm. Right, off we go again. 20th hour deep now. Taking a bit of cutting. I think I'm going to run that through again at the same setting at 20 pounds. Five-hour time is a little bit too much to me. Gonna make it 
take us to 30 I'm going to take a spring pass at that already. What I don't want to do, I don't want to be here. Uh, if you haven't watched the video I did where I made a collet holder for this lathe, if you go back and look at that, it's just the same as this, but the mistake I made is I, uh, when I cut the thread, I used the nut off my collet holder off of the lathe, uh, sorry, off of the milling machine. Now it did such a good, uh, you know, it was a really, really nice fit. Uh, it went on really smoothly, and it still does. So I ordered a new nut, because uh, I needed that one back on the milling machine, obviously. And when the new nut came, it wouldn't fit. It would fit the holder on the mill, but it wouldn't fit uh, this, because I've cut the thread to suit this. So it, uh, it just wasn't having it. Let's see where we get to. I think we were down to 30 last time, weren't we? Let's see what happens now. That's not cutting, so. So, what I mean by the threading is. Uh, I want this to be a nice fit, but I, I want it to be a little loose because the problem is if I don't make it a little loose, another nut will never fit it. And what if I damage that nut, then I'm back it, aren't I? Right, 32 and a half, let's go. Same depth again as a spring pass. Because 
because it's quite a fine thread if you don't keep checking all of a sudden you'll be you will way over so I'll do the same again right, so we're going there we're now to 35 see where we get this thing. disappeared that time. Barely taking anything off at all. That is a really, really good fit. That is. I'm just going to uh, put the thread stuck at them. That's the nut that's going to live on it. But let's just try the nut off the. Now this is the one off my milling machine. Off. I feel a little bit of movement in that one. Well, we can also try the nut off this. This is the collet holder I made a long while ago. Let's see if that goes on. Oh, shit, rammel later in. There. Right. I think, boys, we'll call that good. Uh, I do remember uh, a while ago. I uh, I did a video where I was. Uh, I was cutting these gears and uh, the gears that was missing off my milling machine and somebody, I can't remember who it was, he, had, he did ask me how I cut the splines in the middle and I'd love to take credit for it and say that it was my idea and all the rest of it but it wasn't. Uh, if you remember the milling machine I had before this big Ajax was a really good Harrison uh, Universal Mill. Now the guy I bought that off goes by the name of John Stevenson. I haven't spoken to him for a while. He's uh, he's big on the engineering forum, the model engineering forum in, in England. And I went to see him because I, I put a post on there about could anybody help me cutting the splines for these gears. And he very kindly got back to me and said, yeah, come over and see me. I says, well, you, you know, you can do them on my press. So anyway, I went to see John and i uh, never met him before, lovely guy, uh, in fact I ended up buying a milling machine off him. But, coming back to the question of how are these splines cut, uh, it turned out to be quite simple. You know, I haven't got one, but you know when you see people broaching keyways in cogs like this and they, they make the little collar, don't they, that drops in there, the little bushing, and then they, they push the, uh, the cutter through to cut the keyway. Well, what John had done, he had a, uh, it was a key, it was a, a brooch that had been snapped. So what he did, he put it on a surface grinder and he ground the sides down so it was the uh, right width to cut these slots. And then all he did, the, I don't know what you call it, but the bushing, 
that you would put in there if you were going to cut just a simple keyway. He put that bushing in his dividing head and he cut one of the slots like this and these have got, I can't remember how many they've got now, got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's eight. So on his dividing head he had it set up to obviously cut eight, uh, eight increments, eight slots, eight whatever you want, eight divisions. And the second division, he cut just a tiny little uh, mark in that, and he had a locating pin on it. So all we did, you drop the bushing in here, you cut the first the, the first slot, and then when you when you cut that, you move this slot you've just cut onto the top of the pin that was a uh, was one eighth of a division of the whatever it is around there. And that located it and then pushed it through to do the second one, and vice versa, all the way around. Really, really ingenious little trick. And uh, I went over there with all the blanks and I cut them all, and it didn't take long to do at all. In fact, the little press that I did them on, I bought that off him as well. And I, I actually, in the end, I gave that to my friend Robin. Uh, so, anyway, I hope whoever it was that asked me how they were cut, I hope that helps you. Right, onto this. So we've got a bit of an edge there to break off. The threading, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So what I'm going to have to do now is take this chuck off. Luckily it's centre mark so it can go back on in the same spot. I'm going to have to put another, put the three jaw on. Put a piece of bar in there and machine it down so it runs concentric with the lathe. And then put an ER32 collet on and then set the, set the cross slide to the same taper as that uh, and then uh, once we've got the cross slide set we can take that chuck off and then put this one back on and then cut this well bore it and cut it and do what we've got to do so, right I'll come back in a bit when we're uh, a bit further on right Got the chucks changed over. Uh, let's change some gear on this. So we'll uh, Get this bit of bar cleaned up. We'll take it down to a particular nominal size. I don't know what it'll be. Maybe 20 mil. It's the first collet size, isn't it? We'll just zero the collar on the X. And we'll have a go. Sure, we'll that bit of bar is actually an old chisel angle that I made <laughs> many years ago. So you just uh, see that next to this. We just want it to run concentric to stick a pole on. Uh, or a collet. I think while it's in the way, the way as well. Machine it all the way down to the back and then uh, when I'm finished with it, at least it'll be cleaned up, ready to use for something else. Huh? Seven. I want to take it down to twenty mil. I'm going to get the collets ready to go on now. Bring it back. to be a nice fit on there, no slop in it or anything. <coughs> right, now to get this lined up with that. Well, there's no easy way of doing it, 
So I'll slacken off the top side. I'm going to do this <laughs> from start to finish so you can see what a pain in the arse it can be. So what I'm going to do there, I'm just looking from the back of the machine here. And I'm just going to eyeball that. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to snug, just lightly, one of the, one of the uh, nuts that hold the top slide on. I'm going to put a gauge on. Can you see them? I move the bloody thing, you know. So we'll try there to start with. We can already see it running along. So we'll get it between the slots, pull it to zero. Well, do it the right way, Ali, you donkey. Right, then we'll wind the... Ah, this will be where I've gone wrong straight away. Because I should have wound enough forward on the top side to cover the length that we're going to traverse on, if that makes sense to you. Right, let's have another go, shall we? So we'll bring that in. Can you see the gauge? We have a... It's not brilliant, is it? Let's let me have a play around with this camera, isn't it? Right, let's see if we can get this dialed in then. My experience of this, it's going to be a pain in the ass. So we'll bring the cross slide in and zero that. And we'll start winding the top slide down, so that's saying that we're dropping away in it. Knock this out. A bit more. So we'll come back again and we'll re-zero that. Little lead knocker I made out of a piece of tube. Made a cap to go in the end. Just squashed the cap in in the vice. I've got a couple of blow lamps, obviously, with being a plumber. Uh, I uh, just put a blow lamp either side, just kept dropping lead in until it filled it. It's some old lead pipe I took out of a house a long time ago. Uh, and then when it was full, scraped the crap off the top and just messed about it till it was full. Put it back into the lathe and just machined that bit off the end. Quite a handy little thing, actually. Right, so that's saying that we're still dropping away. So if that needle's dropping, yeah, right, let's come back. Again, we'll wind that back. Zero. Now over that first bit there, it's ten thou over in it, so under, sorry. So I'm going to come that ten thou and another twenty. Just going to snug this nut a little bit to the side as well. It seems to be bouncing a little bit. Right, let's try again, shall we? Uh, am I going the right way? Yeah, we are. 
you got to ask yourself these questions. Right, so we're 20 thou low there. I'm going to double it. I'm going to treble it. Now before when we got to that bit we was a good ten thou low, weren't we? We'll put a little bit more on that one. So I'm gonna treble that again, I'm gonna come back round to to the twenty thou mark. Start again. Zero. Now we're getting to nearly halfway down before we're 20 thousand. 10 thousand, sorry. Troubled it again. Now again, I'm not saying this is how you should do it, I'm just showing you how I've done it. I'm sure that there's an easier way. But Still dropping, so we'll go right to the end now. And we'll see if we can. I'm going to bring it ten thou back. Just gives you some idea when you watch some of the lads on YouTube and they say they've set a taper up like this, and you don't actually see them film it. Some do, but the reason why they don't a lot of the time is because it's such a pain in. Oh, it can be such a pain in the ass. I, mean, I don't know how many times I've gone up and down there. See, we're a low 10,000 there, over 10,000 there when we started. So we're still low now, so we're 5,000 low, I'm going to bring that a plus 10. When you're tramming stuff in your vice, or tramming your vice in on the mill, it doesn't seem anywhere near as bad as this. So we're four thou low there. I'm going to bring that to plus eight. Plus nine even. Closer. Right, so let's go to what are we there? We're minus three. And a bit too far there, but let's just see what that does before we start worrying about it. If anything, we've gone just a tad too much, haven't we? Let's knock that back to the right. So we I don't know how the camera's going to pick this up, but as I'm looking straight down on that gauge, that's smack on zero. And you want to get this as close as you can, you know. 
no good thinking, oh it's within a couple of thou that'll do. Well would you look at that? It's smack bang on still. I'm gonna nip these up. Not all the way. It's right on its zero now. That moves slightly then, but I don't know whether that's just the travel in the gauge. It's just ever so slightly below the zero, mate. When I get down to there, look, it's still just ever so slightly below. When I start to come back the other way, that needle's moved bang on zero. It's gone slightly under. We're talking three or four tenths there. And then when we get to there, we smack on zero. So we could have uh, a little bit of a discrepancy in the collet itself. Could be a little bit of discrepancy in the uh, bar that I've done. In the gauge. Or discrepancy just in me. But that, for me, is uh, about as good as we're going to get. But I just thought I'd show you that, you know, sometimes when you see lads, other YouTubers, they'll, uh, you, you'll get to see them running the dial gauge up and down, and they don't actually show you uh, what how much of a pain in the arse it can't win. I'll be honest with you, that one didn't go too bad. <laughs> I know when I made that other... Uh, the collet chuck for the lathe here that seemed to take ages because it wasn't making sense to me really uh, but whatever distance I was getting out on my gauge so if I, we saw what I did didn't you, if I started there and I only went down say half an inch and it dropped 20 thou I'd tap it back three times the amount at least because otherwise if you tap it to zero and then come back you'd be there well you'll be tapping between now till Christmas so. right so at least that's done so what we can do now cut that off take the collet off put it back in its little plastic condom box uh, I'll change the chuck over get the other one on uh, and then we'll we'll bore this front to suit the uh, collet and then uh, and we'll go from there. Right, so I'll bring you back in a bit. I have a bit to do before I get to that stage, and uh, also I think it's time for a cup of tea. See you in a bit. 